everybody, this is Kelly from Knit Swag, and I wanted to give you um, some tips on how to get started doing the no breaks cowl. For this project, I'm using Fun Dipped Yarn by Discovery of Stitches. What you're going to do, you need to have variegated yarn, and uh, you're going to stretch out your yarn. You want to find the halfway point of the longer color. And so the way that you do that is you just want to stretch out your yarn until the ends of the contrast color line up right about there, All right? And so now this is going to be the halfway point. You're going to back up about an inch. So, this is the halfway point, and you want a little bit, a little bit extra. There we go. So I just grabbed about an extra inch from the long tail. All right, now make a slip knot. Now I find that with the percentage of the skein that was dip dyed in the contrast color, for me, Casting on seven stitches on size six needles works pretty well. And this is with like a, um, like a fingering weight yarn. And so you need to do a knitted on cast on. And the way that you do that, make sure you're using the correct tail. You wanna take your tail, put it off to the side. You wanna use the, the body of your yarn. And so you're gonna insert your needle front to back, loop around backwards. Let me zoom in. There we go, that's a little bit better. And put that stitch on your left needle and do that a total of six times for seven stitches on your needle. So I've got four, five, six, seven. Okay, double check, yep. Just going to work this in stockinette stitch until we reach the purple. And because of the way that the stitches lie on um, the needle with the knitted on cast on, you're not going to go in between the stitches. You are going to go um, like so. And that's just for the first row because the stitches lie, um, they lie on the needle twisted from how they normally would be. Now all your selvage stitches are going to be worked in stockinette. So this row I'm purling. That was row three. This is gonna be row four. Row five. This is row six. Now I'm coming to the purple and keep on knitting and stocking it. For each 
foundation stitch of the contrast color, it needs to be, it needs to have a, um, the first stitch of every row of the contrast color needs to be in stockinette. And so the edges are always in stockinette. So I'm going to purl this to go to stockinette stitch edge. And now I'm going to um, flip the yarn to the back and I'm going to knit a couple of stitches. So I'm actually going to be working these. The, the purpose of, of um, that is to work the whole contrast section in reverse stock in it but in order to not have the color blips on the front side you need to have a foundation of um, stock in it stitches so once i get to the the contrast color again i'm going to start working it in i'm going to i'm going to purl those all right now the selvage stitches are always going to be stock in it but so now I've got, um, I'm in contrast color and I want the contrast color, I always want the front of it to be in reverse stockinette. So I'm gonna bring the yarn to the front and purl across. And again, selvage stitches are in stockinette. So I'm gonna knit that one Curl that one and again the contrast color is in reverse stock in it and this is the back side so I'm gonna knit these except for the edge stitch which is in stock in it so now you can see that the the main color is worked in stock in it Contrast color is worked in reverse stock in it when you're looking at it from, from the front. And so there's not going to be like a set number of knits and purls, you know, in the pattern. It's really, it's dependent upon your yarn. So now I'm back to the main color again and it needs to be in stock in it. So I'm going to put the yarn to the back and knit across. Now that uh, purple stripe and you know yours depending on what your colorway is whatever your contrast color is it should land in the center of your little bitty square. So let's see how many how many rows I've got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm at eleven rows right now. And I've got a total of seven stitches. And I need to work one row fewer than double the number of stitches. So this is going to be 12. And now this is the bind off row for my first square. So just do a regular, regular bind off. Uh, make sure it's not too tight. Okay, now you're gonna pick up I've got one stitch on my needle. 
I'm going to pick up six stitches along this edge again for a total of seven stitches. I like to pick up, um, see how there's, there's some little, little stitches here that, that kind of go diagonally. Those are the ones I like to pick up. Great, and so now I'm gonna be working in the next unit up. And if my if my guesstimation on where the center point was correct, and I think it is because this purple lined up in the center of the block, um, the next bit of purple should line up in approximately the same spot, starting on about row six. So this is uh, row three. Four. And I know in the pattern I said, you should wind your tail onto a bobbin. Of course, I don't have a bobbin, so I'm getting all tangled. But ideally, you should have a bobbin. Five. Six. Seven, and there's my, there's my contrast color. It's actually showing up on row eight in this square, which is no big deal. No big deal. And again, I need that foundation of stock and it stitch. I need that foundation um, stock and it stitch on the contrast color before I start working the reverse stock and it stitch. Now I switch to uh, reverse socking it all the way across. So I've done 10 rows. Eleven. This is twelve. Now, in the previous square, I had I had work. I had bound off on row thirteen, and on this square, 
I, um, that's not going to work. I had too many, too many rows here. And so what I, what I could do is I could simply work another couple of rows of stock in it. No big deal to just kind of, um, build it up a little bit extra on the top and try to get it centered back again. So we'll do that and see, see what happens. Now I'll bind off. So this square two has got a little bit more, um, it's got two more rows than this one does. And that's no big deal. I'm not even gonna worry about it. No one will ever know. So what I'm gonna do to rectify that is on the last square, I picked up six along the edge. I'll just pick up seven here Four, five. Six. Seven, and I'm gonna pick up one little edge stitch right there. Sorry. There we go. So I've got eight. Now what I'm gonna do is just throw those two together. No big deal, I'm back to seven. And continue working the main color in stocking it and the contrast color in reverse stocking it. Round and round you go. Now the first, I think, hundred units are done concentrically, counterclockwise. And then I have you switch to back and forth. It looks like this uh, purple is gonna show up again on row eight. And so another thing that you could do is instead of doing seven stitches for um, your square, you could just do eight. And that'll kind of, that'll eat up a little bit more yarn. And that will also serve to shift your purple down a little bit. So the, the number of stitches that you use in your square and the number of rows, it's somewhat fluid. Um, the most important thing is that the, the stripe is 
kind of in the center. And so if the size of the square changes ever so slightly, it really doesn't matter. You just have to learn to read, read your yarn, and just make adjustments. So there's no fussy stitch by stitch instructions um, in that regard. It's it's kind of freeing. Like you could totally you know watch TV and carry on a conversation while you're doing this. Yeah. And so I think on the next, the next square, I'll probably do eight stitches to shift that, that purple down just a little bit. Let's see, how am I doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I think that was that was thirteen. Yeah. Well, that's you know, that's not totally centered. That's okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna back, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Bind off that row. And then on unit four, I'll just use eight stitches, no big deal. You could also experiment with a different a different needle size. Like if you wanted one that you that like ate up a little bit more yarn, you could go down. Um, you could go down a needle size so the yarn is a little bit more densely packed in the stitches. It depends on if you know how your drape is on your fabric, what you like. Um, I think that this is a size US six. I think US size five would probably make the the contrast color line up just a little bit better in the center uh, with this particular yarn. But honestly, I like the fabric of a size six a little bit better. And so I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, now this one is a little bit different because um, we need to join unit four to unit one as we go. And so um, what you're gonna do is just pick up one stitch from the side of unit one and knit two together with the last stitch of unit four. Easy peasy. And just continue working stuck in it and reverse stuck in it and the edges are always kept in uh, it's a single stitch stock in it salvage
Yes, I need a bobbin. <laughs> Good gracious. So here I'm on row nine and I'm just coming to my purple. So I probably need to work a couple of extra rows of the, the main color. You know what I probably should have done? I should have worked this one taller. Stop all that. Okay, so I worked unit three a little, a little taller. And now I'll pick up, I'll pick up stitches for unit four. So I've got eight stitches for unit four, and I worked a couple of extra rows on unit three. So that should shift the purple down enough so that it's in the center of the square for unit four. We'll see. Row three. Again, joining the last stitch of the row with the edge stitch of unit one. So well, that's five rows. This is six. Seven. Again, working that foundation uh, column of 
stockinette stitch for each of your um, contrast color stitches. And now we're going to switch to reverse stockinette. Now normally the edge stitch is done in stockinette, but because this is a joining, I'm joining here, you can just do a reverse stockinette stitch. So you're going to just purl across until you pass all the purple stitches and then switch to knits. No, I did that wrong. You're going to knit across. There we go. Until you pass the purples. And then you're going to purl. And now we're back to working in stocking it when viewed from the front side. So it seems there's going to be about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows of main color in between all of the purple rows or contrast color. And I currently have three rows. And so if I um, if I knit across here, that'll give me four or five. I'm going to try that. That'll give me six rows. And so on square five, the purple should be pushed down to the bottom a bit. Okay, now here is, here is something that's a little different. If I was to work this row and then bind off, I would be, I would be binding off in the center here. And so what I want is to have my edge stitches. I want to finish over here. And so what I'm going to do I'm just going to bind off on this row. And so that when I get ready for unit 6, it's going to start over here. Now normally you don't you don't bind off on the wrong side, 
but on these corner stitches, and I, I believe on the pattern, those are, they're colored differently. I think they're pink. On those corner units, you will bind off on the wrong side. And it's so that it will position your yarn in the exact corner for the next unit, like so. Now, we don't wanna pick up here because then the stitches would be going in the same direction. And so in order to get unit five to be worked um, perpendicular to this, we needed to use the same technique we did for unit one, which was a knitted on cast on. And I'm gonna use, I'll use seven stitches this time. You know what, I'm gonna do eight and see how that works. Eight might, might be the number of stitches I need for my, my squares. All right, so I've got my stitches worked and I'm gonna knit the same square as I, you know, as I had before, um, like unit one, in that I need to go through the stitches like so, instead of in between the two stitches. I mean, I suppose you could do it either way. This will tighten up those bottom stitches, which is fine too, whichever you like. Now on your first row, you do not need to join to unit four. You're gonna start joining on the next row. So that was two rows, this is three. Regardless, make sure your piece isn't twisted, and now you can start joining to that unit. Now you can see that by adjusting the number of rows and adjusting the number of stitches in the square, we've gotten this um, contrast color to shift downward a bit. So before I think it was like starting on row eight or so, and here it's starting on I think row five. 